Hey guys, we're putting in an extra day at the greenhouse this week. Things are really starting to ramp up. The Dutch bucket system is at full capacity and I need to do some work on everything today, especially these grape tomatoes. And with the longer days, the NFT system has a lot quicker turnaround. So we're doing a lot more seeding, planting and cleaning. This whole section is the next stuff that goes to the CSA program. It's gonna get harvested here in a couple days. It's a really nice uh, loose head Asian cabbage. We have some dirty channels and you know that we like to keep things super clean in here. If we space them apart to pull the channels across to get them clean, we could break a lot of the leaves off. So we're gonna hold off on these until this is harvested. Mom's cleaning some channels over there. Okay, I harvested all the uh, mini Swiss chard of all these channels yesterday to down, take down to Yellowbird. Uh, your dad and I took it down and now I'm getting cleaned up to put the um, bok choy in here for the next round. Over here we have some more endive and this time mom double seeded these. We're trying to get the centers to be nice and compact and actually not get sunlight in the middle because I guess it's desirable to have blanched out middles for endive. So the two centers are right there and then right there and they're both in the same oasis cube. At least still have a couple more weeks. I'm gonna get this last round of spinach planted today. It's not really even worth trying to start another round after this with the days getting longer because it just doesn't like the heat. So I'm gonna put the spinach here by the Tokyo Bacana. And when we have the room, we'll leave an empty channel in between because you can see the leaves are kind of growing over and covering it up. And then just like to keep everything separate if we can. So I get questions about where our channels are from. These are from Crop King. And one of the best things about these is the removable tops because you can get in there and totally sanitize everything. So we like that. And we also like how this um, support system is designed so that way we can pull the channels across and rest them and not have to climb underneath all the time. Let's see what these roots look like. Look healthy. This one fell out of the Oasis cube. So mom taught me this trick. You just kind of open it up like that and then you can put it back in here and then smash the roots back in and it'll be fine. You just have to have a very gentle touch with these while you're breaking them apart. And then you just make sure they're touching the bottom of the channel and they'll be good to go. So spinach can be a pain to germinate, but we made a video a while back on how we get it to go. And uh, these are seeded into the multi-seed oasis cubes like we use for everything. And you'll see too that some of them, um, there's actually two spinach plants in like this one. And it's fine, they'll grow just fine. I think we've even had three in one Oasis cube before and they did fine. So we just like to try stuff, see what works. All right, just a nice little section of spinach for friends and family. Another important thing about hydroponic greenhouses is keeping that pesky algae down. So the best way to do it is keep as many growing surfaces covered as possible. The spinach was right here in the nursery channel. So I'm gonna take this bottom tray cover this up because without the sun then the algae can't grow and it's time to pull out this big old stuff so i harvest and you pull okay i put gloves on because it's algae I, oh, I didn't see yet <laughs> Kelly's been in here way too long. 
So I'll stand aside these channels when I come through and do this whole section. There's still good leaves though. I'm glad we're getting them. Yep. Got a nice bag to take home too. So I had to mix more nutrients. With all the sunshine, I had to turn the um, timer to more often, so I went through a few more. Taking a little peek at our flower seeds. Not a whole lot going on. I saw a couple of the seeds were starting to crack open. And I love mom's idea of putting the clear trays on the bottom because I can see they have plenty of water. There's a lot of flopping over going on in here. This is pretty cool though. They're starting to look like little cucumbers. That made the cucumber seem so much taller. And about these grape tomatoes, they're pretty splayed out. So I noticed they also had a bunch of suckers on them too. I think what I'm gonna do is clip them on the strings, let the main stem straighten out, and then I'll come back through and get the suckers off. I just didn't wanna start coming at them with the clippers and accidentally cut the main stem. I've done that before. These should be straightened up by tomorrow. And the plan is to have this whole row eventually be cucumbers. And like I said before, we are going to take these out to the high tunnel. It's just gonna have to be a team effort now. Somebody's gonna have to carry the bucket and then somebody else will have to hold the strings. But they had to get strung up. They were just getting too crazy. This is where they'll go. And then also the flowers, peppers, and a bunch of other stuff once it warms up. So once that gets going, then we're gonna be really busy. We're standing on the pond. Ice is finally thick enough, but I was actually standing in this exact same spot this spring, but down on the bottom. We were noticing the pond wasn't really healthy and we're, we are finding some dead fish here and there. And then one day we noticed the pond was really green and there's this big algae bloom and a bunch of them died. Plus it was getting overtaken by lily pads. They were all around the perimeter and we couldn't fish anymore like we used to. So dad decided to rent a big excavator and he drained the pond and at the bottom there was like three feet of this mucky black stuff. It smelled really bad. And we think this pond has been here for a long time. So who knows how long that stuff's been accumulating for. And we also read that the muck can contribute to a poor water environment and also causes algae blooms. So he was happy he drained it and he got it all scraped out. And the one side is back to being about 25 feet deep now. So uh, then he closed it up and they let it fill up again, which didn't take very long because this pond is naturally spring fed, which is pretty cool. And they ordered some fish and put in some um, bluegill. I know some bass and then a couple other ones. See them in there? Cool. There they go. Hopefully they're doing okay under there. <laughs> All the parts came in for the snowmobile and they're almost done putting it back together. 
right, here we go. to say quick that the greenhouse construction video is still coming I just have a lot of footage to work through so if you have any questions or comments leave those for me and thanks for watching